G'day friends, it's Andrew here from Nature's Image Photography with the first in a new series of videos about processing my RAW files from start to finish in real time. I'll be using Adobe Camera Raw in Photoshop as I do for all my photos and because this is the first time I've had to edit and talk at the same time I'm going to start with something fairly simple, this nice little shot of a female red-backed fairy wren. Before we start, if you're new to my channel I would love it if you could hit that subscribe button to keep in touch with more of these, plus content from my whole world of photography. So this came about in response to several requests, uh, the most recent one came from Andrew Laws. Thanks Andrew, and I hope there are plenty of other people out there too who might be interested to see how I process my raw files. Now because this is the first of these videos, I would welcome some feedback from my subscribers. So after watching the video, I'd love to see your answers to the following questions. First, what sort of information did I leave out of this demo that you would have liked to know? And second, what kind of images would you like to see me process in the future? Of course, if image editing doesn't interest you, that's fine. Most of the content on my channel is, and always will be, about camera skills. And speaking of camera skills, here are the essential settings. This was taken on the Panasonic Lumix G9 with the Leica Panasonic 100-400mm lens. The ISO was 200, aperture f6.3, and the shutter speed was a 400th of a second. So that's how I took the photo, now let's see how I take it from raw to finished product. So my editing project begins where all my editing projects begin and that's here in Adobe Bridge. This is the, uh, the cataloging software associated with Adobe Photoshop. It's where I organize my photographs and select which ones I'm going to use. Um, this entire folder was a successful afternoon of bird photography I had down at Lake Baroon and some of these photographs I've already featured in an earlier YouTube video about bird photography but this is one that I haven't shown before and it's the one I've decided to work with and when you see the, um, the bigger version I'm going to show you what, what it is about this photograph that made me select it. So I double click in Adobe Bridge and that brings the photograph into Adobe Camera Raw and this is where I'll do my editing. Now the thing I like about this photograph, which I've only just noticed, um, you notice by the way that my cursor at the moment is a magnifying glass, so if I click on the photograph that brings up the 100% view and we can see that it's got a little bug in its mouth uh, and I thought that was just a nice enough extra detail that uh, it was worth featuring. You can also see the shadow of the bug uh, down here just below the bird's chin. So that's what made me select the photograph. Now. In terms of composition, I like the shape of the bird's tail angled in a little bit and the turn of the bird's head. Both those features tend to lead the eye a little bit from right to left and that draws our attention over this way where there's that bit of extra nice detail uh, of the grass which I think will balance the shot quite nicely. But it's going to need some cropping because right now there's a bit too much empty space at the bottom and at the right. So I want to do a crop. That's the first thing I'll do because I would rather crop first and edit later. So uh, I go to, up to my cropping tool and I can stick with the original format which is the native format of the, um, uh, the Panasonic Lumix G9 um, which is the 3.4 um, the format but often I'll go for some other options. Uh, quite often I'll, I'll use a 2x3 format because that's a more traditional uh, photograph shape. Um, but to be honest I think what I'm going to do for this shot is a 16 by 9 simply because this is destined for a YouTube video and 16 by 9 is the standard YouTube format. So this is the shape I'll be working with and I just need to try to get as, as good a balance as I can. Uh, I don't want to crop in too tightly on the bird. I also don't want too much extra space over on the right here. So I think that probably gives me about the best balance I'm going to get. And so now if I click enter on my keyboard, we can blow that up and that's now the photograph I'm going to be working with. So from here, having chosen my crop, it's now time to get on with the editing. The first thing I usually do when it comes to editing, uh, I don't know if other photographers do this but I usually do, is I go uh, and click auto right at the top here. Um, I don't intend to use the auto version but I do like to uh, just click it because it sort of tells me what Photoshop thinks should be done with this photograph and sometimes it gives me a few clues as to where I might take it. So I click auto 
and that's what Photoshop comes up with automatically. Um, I don't much like it, I think it's a bit over the top, but it definitely shows that this photograph could benefit from a bit more contrast if nothing else. Um, so um, I can see uh, some, some good features in that shot that do need a bit of uh, help bringing them to life, but I'm going to unclick auto now and I'm going to do the work myself because I'll come up with a, a result that I'm happier with. Now, I don't think I need to change the exposure uh, because uh, the picture is pretty well exposed. It is bright, but it was a fairly uh, pale coloured bird in a, in a brightly coloured uh, background on a sunny day. So the, co the exposure is about right, um, but it lacks a bit of contrast. So first of all, I open the, the basic section here. Uh, and as I said, I'm not going to touch exposure because I think the exposure is about right. I do want to work on the contrast. The first thing I'm going to do is come down to the whites and the blacks here. Now, if I hold my finger on the keyboard on the Alt button and press down on whites, you see the screen turns black. And now if I slide my whites across to the right, you see just where the whites start to come into it. I don't want a lot of white. Uh, the picture's already pale enough as it is. I don't need to add much more to it. Um, but I just go to where I start to see a hint of the whites there. Uh, and I'll do the same with the blacks. If I hold my finger down on the Alt button on my keyboard and click on blacks and the screen turns white, I can, I can now slide this across to the left just to where the beginnings of the blacks come in. That darkest patch there is the bird's eye. So what I've done here is essentially tell Photoshop that these are the darkest pixels I want in my photograph, these are the brightest pixels, and everything else in the picture should be in between, which is the way you want it. Now at the bottom of the screen here, there's a little toggle switch that lets me switch between where we started and where we are now. And you can see that just by adjusting the whites and the blacks, we've already made a difference to the photograph. Um, but there's more to be done. I'm going to now come up to highlights and shadows. I'm going to bring the shadows across. There's not a lot of shadow in this picture, but I do want to just lighten up that area around the outside so we can um, keep some nice detail in the darker parts of the bird and I'm going to bring the highlights down. There's a lot of highlight in this photograph and I don't want it to look too pale so I'm going to bring those highlights back. Notice that the changes I'm making are all fairly subtle. I'm not doing anything obvious and I'm not doing anything to the picture that makes it look like it's been edited in a big way. I'm just trying to make the photograph look as natural as I can. Um, now having done that, I'm going to adjust the contrast a little bit to the right. I've got some friends who say that because they can adjust the whites and the blacks and the highlights and the shadows, there's really no need to touch contrast. Um, but I find that adding a bit of contrast sometimes just crisps a photograph up a little bit, makes it look a little bit more three-dimensional and lifelike. And the same down here with clarity. If I slide the clarity across to the right just a little bit, it just makes the whole thing look a little bit more three-dimensional, like you're looking at the real thing rather than just at a picture. Um, now, all of these sliders can be revisited, so having now added some contrast, if I think I need a little bit more lightness in the shadows, I can do that. I don't want to go too far. Um, and also I can bring back the highlights a bit. But I'm starting to get pretty happy with that photograph. So I'm going to close down basic because I think I've done most of what I want to do there. Oh, hang on, no, there is one thing I want to change. I'm overall happy with the picture, but I'm not entirely happy with the color. I tend to find that the Lumix G9 skews a little bit in the RAW files towards magenta. Uh, the photographs tend to look a little bit sort of reddish, uh, purplish, uh, a little bit more than they should. So um, the first thing I'll, um, I'll do now, or sorry, the next thing I'll do is adjust the white balance. I have t a couple of ways I can do this. I can go to the preset options. Um, and see again what uh, comes up with automatically. If I click on Auto, I don't like that. I think that uh, it's uh, taken away all the warmth but it's left the magenta so that hasn't worked. I can also try Daylight because it was taken in Daylight. Oh, and I really don't like that. Uh, that takes away the magenta but it adds way too much warmth. So neither of those presets is really working for me. So I'm going to go back to As Shot and I'm going to make my adjustments myself because uh, I do want them to be subtle and just try to correct the color without it looking like any color has been added. So I want to grab the tint slider and move it a little bit to the left away from the magenta and towards the green 
and that just takes that bit of extra redness out of the picture. Um, and because it was taken in the late afternoon, I want to keep that warmth of the late afternoon light. I don't want to go overboard, so I'm going to grab my temperature slider and I'm going to slide it just a little bit across to the right and that gives the picture that nice look of late afternoon sunlight. So I think I've done a better job there correcting the colours or the white balance myself rather than going with the presets. So that's everything I want to do in the basic area. Now I'm going to shut basic down and move on. At this point I tend to work down through the uh, what I call the chapters here on the main screen uh, and I'll go through them one step at a time. I don't normally mess with curves, uh, I've never really been big on curves, um, but I'll go into detail and this is where the sharpening and the noise reduction happens. Now if I'm going to do sharpening and noise reduction I want to see the picture at 100% so I can see what difference it's making. Now it's um, it doesn't need any noise reduction. This photograph was taken at 200 ISO. It's not even a little bit noisy so I'm not going to mess with that but I will adjust sharpening a little bit. Uh, in um, Adobe Camera Raw the sharpening is already by default set to 40 uh, but I'm going to slide it across just a little bit up to let's say 55 um, and that just tends to crisp up the, the outlines of the bird's feather detail there. Um, again nothing uh, unnatural but it just makes the photograph look that little bit sharper sort of at the pixel level but that's all I need to do here so I'm going to shut down detail. Uh, go back to the full view. Uh, now I'm going to have a look at the colour mixer. This is where you can work on um, individual colours and I'll do this sometimes if I think that one colour is either lacking or too heavy handed and overpowering the picture. And I do think that even though this was a bright sunny day and it looks um, quite vibrant having that sunlight on the grass in the background, it's so bright it tends to distract a little bit from the bird. So I'm going to um, go into some of these colours. Yellow and green is essentially what this area is made up of. So I'm going to go to luminance and I'm going to slide yellows a little bit to the left, just a bit. Uh, and I'm going to slide greens a little bit to the left as well. Now with all of these things you can go overboard and it starts to look really silly. Uh, but if, you, if you're subtle with it uh, you can make it look not, a, not just um, natural but probably more natural than what the, the camera came up with in the first place. And so that's enough then to just tone down the background. And I'm not trying to tone down the background in such a way as to make anything look fake. I'm actually trying to draw your attention a little bit more to the bird by reducing the, back, the, um, the distraction of the background. So I think I've done what I need to do there in the colour mixer so I'm going to shut that one down. Um, now as I work down through here I don't mess with colour grading, I look at optics. Um, sometimes you'll see some chromatic aberration in a photograph. Uh, I can't see any in this picture. Uh, you tend to see it around the, the sharp edges there. I can't see any so if I needed to I could click that but I'm not going to. Uh, go back to the full view. I don't really need to do much more here. Uh, sometimes I will have a look at just a, a, um, a subtle little vignette which you find in the effects area here. And a vignette, if you don't know what that is, uh, you'll see it in a moment if you slide it way to the left or the right, it can darken or lighten down the fringes of a photograph. Uh, now obviously if you go overboard it just looks silly. Uh, but I do find that if I sometimes bring a, just a subtle little vignette into the shot, not, not heavy handed but just very subtle. Uh, what it does is it dulls down the outer fringes of the picture, not in an obvious way, but just enough to help draw attention into the centre of the photograph, which is where, where the subject is, and that's what, really what I want you to see. So I'm going to apply just a very faint little vignette there, and that tends to bring the attention onto the bird, which is what I want. So now that is really everything I want to do in this area, and we could just about say we're done except I'd like to have a look at this brightest part of the bird at the centre there, just make sure that I'm not losing too much detail. Um, it is very white, the sun was full on the, the white chest of the bird, and I wonder if I can't just get a little bit more detail out of this area. Now I don't want to adjust the entire picture, I just want to pick this area. So I'm going to go to my adjustment brush, which is up here. And when you select adjustment brush, you see a screen which is very similar to the basic editing area except that whatever I do now will only be done to the area I select. You can see the circle size I've chosen there which is just going to work on this area here. Um, so I'm going to um, try to 
darken that down a fraction and try to add some contrast uh, and see if we can't bring out a bit more feather detail and prevent any real overexposure there. I'm just going to bring exposure down a tiny bit, really a very, very tiny bit, but I'm going to bring highlights down. I'm going to add some contrast because as at the same time as darkening down the highlights, I want to see if I can bring out some more detail in that shadow and contrast will help um, obviously increase the contrast between the lights and the darks. Um, and I'm going to add a bit of texture and clarity and see if that will help bring out some of that feather detail. Uh, now I'm going to wave my wand over the area that I'm working on and once again you can see that what I've done is subtle, it's, there's nothing obvious about it, but it's taken that very, very white patch and just brought it back a little bit. And by adding that bit of extra contrast, it's helping to make that shadow stand out more. I'll come back to texture and clarity. And when now we're seeing a little bit more feather detail in an area that was by and large just washed out and overexposed before. So that's something you can do with a raw file. Um, there's areas that at first glance appear to be just white but they can be rescued quite successfully um, whereas maybe you couldn't do that with a JPEG. So now I'm going to go back to my main screen and go back to the full view and I think we've done a pretty good job. One more time I'm going to go down to the little toggle here just to show you where we started and where we are now. I think we've got a much more natural picture that looks like a real bird taken in real daylight uh, and that's really all I'm going to do in this uh, part of my editing process. Uh, so we're almost done. At this point I click open and when I do that, that sends the photograph from Adobe Camera Raw into the creative side of Photoshop and I really don't do very much here at all. At this point uh, I just want to resize the picture and I do a little bit of uh, double checking uh, which I'll explain in a moment. So because this photograph is going to appear in a YouTube video, all the photographs I select for YouTube, I resize to 2560 pixels on the long side. So I'm going to click image size and then I'm just going to select 2560 and uh, click OK and that resizes my picture down to the size that uh, I'll be saving for the YouTube video. Uh, we can go up here and click fit on screen so we can see the, the full size version again. But there's our photo. Now here I like to just give myself a little bit of backup because uh, I'm sure you can understand when you edit a photograph sometimes you can stare at a picture for so long you really don't know if any more editing is going to make it better or worse. Um, so I reach a point where I think I've done everything I can do and here when I'm in Photoshop I will just click image and auto contrast. Um, and if that makes the photograph look better then I'm happy and if it makes it look worse I go back to what I had. Now in truth uh, that's done almost nothing to the, the, the photograph at all. If I click edit and undo you'll see that my version and the auto contrast version are virtually identical. So um, Photoshop there I think is telling me I've done a pretty good job. So I'm happy with that uh, and now all I've got left to do is uh, save the picture and have it ready for my YouTube video. So I click file export, I click save for web, I don't know if this is how it's meant to be done but this is how I've always done it and then I click save and uh, you can see that I've got the unedited version of the photograph already saved in this folder for my YouTube video but this is the the version I want to produce as my finished product so I am going to give it a different name so it doesn't overwrite just add an A in there, click save and we're done. So for those rare souls who've made it right to the end, now you know the entire story of how I took this photo from raw file to finished product. Once again I welcome your feedback in the comments, please keep it respectful. And if you want to see more of these in the future, make sure you're subscribed before you go. I'm Andrew Goodall and this is Nature's Image Photography, thanks for watching.